What is up? Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you watch this. No, two important things before we get started. Jesus loves you, and Brother Dave loves you too. Now listen, this is so important. Don't miss any of this video today. Make sure you share this with someone. Right off the bat, just share it with someone. Because it's powerful, and someone needs to hear this Christmas story. Why? Because this is Christ miss this isn't christmas this is christ miss this is about jesus now jesus wasn't born at this time let's just be real i don't really know the exact date when he was born but he wasn't born at this time okay now with that being said we still celebrate it as a representation of him not as a representation of santa and getting gifts we miss the point all the time let me tell you we miss it all the time we're like oh we gotta get our kids gift and oh if we don't get our gift i mean i've watched so listen depression suicide debt all of it's at an all-time high right now because people freak out during the holidays because they think if they're not getting their kid the brand new iphone 18 or 15 or 16 or whatever that you know they're just a horrible parent it's not about gifts. It's about the greatest gift that was given to you and to me, Jesus. So powerful. Did you know that this was this Bible prophesied, okay, the book, okay, way before prophesied of what was going to happen? Did you know Jesus fulfilled prophecy? Did you know the Bible's the only book in the world that actually has prophecy from past to present being fulfilled? The only book. The only book that said, hey, 400 years ago, it said this. And that, and now that's coming true. That's why Jesus always said, this has been fulfilled today. As you see, that's why Jesus read in the temples. He was fulfilling scripture. They couldn't, that's why, I, so how did they not see it? Like, how did you not, how did they miss it so bad? They were so filled with religion and not relationship. I'm very, look, I'm a very standoffish religion guy. I don't like religion. I think there is good in some religion, only Christianity, no other religion. But um, I think there's also a lot of bad. There's a lot of man-made junk in it. A lot. Jesus came to give relationship. Let's go into the word. Powerful. Don't miss any of this. Don't miss any of this. You got to hear this. Isaiah 7, 14. Remember, this is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus is ever there. Isaiah stands in front of everyone and says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now hear me, okay? Isaiah, hundreds of years before Jesus is ever born, says there's going to be a virgin that's going to bear a son. People were probably like, what? Wait, 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 wait. Did he just say a virgin? Like, does he know you're going to get pregnant to be able to have a kid? How is she going to get pregnant if she's a virgin? I'm not putting two. Isaiah, what's going on, buddy? Like, what, what? And he said, therefore... The Lord himself will give you a son. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, we go ahead to Isaiah 9, 6. Now, hear this one. This one's even more powerful. Imagine this. For unto us a child is born. Ooh. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful. Woo! He's wonderful. Ain't he wonderful? Praise the Lord. Counselor. Woo! Did you know they called Jesus God in the Old Testament? What? I'm preaching. Listen, people don't think Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. They're one, even though they're separate. You want to see? Here you go. Old Testament. Isaiah. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. He's called the Father, and he's called God. People are like, well, that's different. Father's different than Jesus. No, he's not. No, he's not. You either believe all of it or you don't believe none of it. Okay, let's go over it again. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. But the government will be upon his shoulders. Woo! And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He's called Everlasting Father. But David, he prays to the Father. How can... You're not, you're not understanding it. He became, the Bible says, we're going to get into this, that the word became flesh and dwelt among men. God's word is Jesus. Jesus is the visible representation of the invisible God. Now let's go to Luke. Praise the Lord. I don't know why I'm in Matthew. Oh, I'm in Matthew because I'm reading with my awesome little nephew. Okay, Luke, I didn't highlight this. I'm kind of bummed now. Oh my gosh. I, 
I just slightly ripped this. You guys, I'm so sad right now. I slightly ripped this Bible. <sighs> what a bummer. All right, Luke 1, 26 through 35. I usually highlight everything, but I didn't. I guess I didn't highlight this because I was supposed to. I did a short version of this, and now I'm doing the long version, so it's a little flip-flopped. But uh, Luke 1, 26 to 35. Now in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent to God, by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. See, it came from the line of David. Did you know it was also prophesied during David's time that he said, I will give you one that sits on your throne forever. Prophesied during David. hundred. I think it might even have been a thousand years, maybe even more than that. Before Jesus ever stepped in the scene, God prophesied it through David saying, I will give you one. That sits on your throne forever. That's why it says, To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. It was of the lineage of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. All right? Now hear me. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. Oh, when she saw him, sorry, verse 29, but when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, considered what manner of reading this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. See, the Lord God, see, prophecy fulfilled again. Prophecy fulfilled again. There you go. Right, 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 write it and read. Read it, read it and we I'm saying that wrong. You get what I'm saying. Hopefully you're catching what I'm saying. Okay. Then what does she say? Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Right? Are you hearing me today? Okay. If you notice, we're gonna I'm gonna go over something real quick. Did you notice Elizabeth? Zacharias sorry, asked, how can this be? I'm very old in my age. Zacharias asked with, with doubt, right? Mary asked with, okay, but how? I'm a virgin. Do you understand? It's okay to ask questions to the Lord, but not with doubt. Doubt is not good. If you say, okay, I believe you can do this, but how are you going to do this? Right? How are you going to do this, Lord? See, that's what Mary was saying. She was saying, Lord, I believe, but but how? I'm a virgin. Like, I, I've never been known to a man. Like, how is this going to be possible? And he says, don't worry. I'm going to take him and place him in your womb. The Holy Spirit's going to place him in your womb. Why? Jesus was born of a virgin to be pure, so Jesus wasn't born into sin. Remember, a lamb without a spot or blemish. Now, let's go into this. Now, remember, up until this time, okay, all the Israelites, all the Jewish people, had sacrificed a lamb without a spot or a blemish. It had to be a lamb with that perfect lamb. So what they would do with the lamb is they'd take the lamb and wrap the lamb in swaddling cloths and place the lamb in a manger. The reason they did that is so the lamb wouldn't hurt itself, wouldn't cause no imperfections. The lamb would be perfect. It had to be a perfect lamb to be sacrificed every year. The highest priest would go and sacrifice this perfect lamb. It had to be perfect, a lamb without a spot or a blemish, right? So here's here we go. Luke 2, 7 through 14. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. Now, if you miss this, a lot of people miss this. They're like, oh, they, there was no room for him in the end. He had to be born in a barn. Think about this. The creator of everything in the world had to be born in a barn. First off, crazy, right? But it was more purpose than that than we realize. It was a representation of the lamb being born without a spot, without a blemish, being placed in a manger as they did with actual lambs. It was a representation of what had been going on for years. Do you understand that? This is what I'm talking about. So if you look at the beginning of time, this had been prophesied through sacrifice, okay? Sacrifice animals. People couldn't even stomach. Listen, the people that are around these days couldn't even stomach the sacrificial stuff that went on in the past. I'm talking about they said the streets ran with blood. You look at Solomon's time and King David's time. They said the streets ran with blood from all the sacrifice. I mean, we have no concept. People are like, oh, I don't want to see that little animal. People have no concept because they've been too cushy cushy for too long, you know? Like everything's just cushion cushion, you know? No, no big deal. Like people don't even realize. Like people don't even know how to... I'm not getting to that. Thank you, Lord. Lord said, stay on track, David. Praise the Lord. All right. So, verse 8. Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. You notice? 
A lot of the times when angels come, people are afraid. You notice that all the other false gospels in the world that people create, that they've seen an angel, they were never afraid. What does the devil come as? An angel of light. All right, let's continue on. Then the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, and you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a great angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on peace on earth, and goodwill towards men. All of heaven... Watch Jesus, who had been around since the creation of time, get placed in a woman and, and to be started out as a baby. All heaven's like, dang, this is crazy. Like, I, I knew the Lord was like, wow, but now he's getting put in a human. The create, Have he seen what the humans do down there? They're savages. They're savages down there. Like, what? And he's going to go be placed in one of their wombs and be at their mercy? Lord, you, you hardcore. We don't... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's hardcore. Think about it. The creator of the universe got placed in a woman's womb for you, for me. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We don't, we don't grasp that. Christmas is great with family and gifts and all the great things that come along with it, sure. But when we miss the point that the creator of the world came down and got put in a woman i'm i've been a wretched sinner in life okay and most people find it hard to realize that someone can become so new in a creation that all old things have passed away and all things have become new but i only became that through jesus coming down and being placed in a woman for me, for let's not even talk about you, but for me, do you understand? The creator of the world, I mean, grasp it, got put in a woman to pay our price, to do what he had, to suffer through pain. And st- this is someone who, this is, this is, I shouldn't say someone, but this is the one. Thank you, Lord. That has always been and always was and will always be got placed in a woman and got born into the world like us to feel how we feel, to suffer how we suffer, to go through the struggles, the trials. People have no idea. There's no other story in the world. There's no other religion in the world. Every other religion in the world is about what you have to do to be saved. Christianity is the only one in the world, the only one that says, hey, it's what's been done for you. To be saved. Wow. Wow. I just, wow. I don't even know what to say after that. I mean, wow. All right, let's go to John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, now we're going to talk a little bit about Jesus and where he was in the beginning, was the Word. The Word is Jesus. Hear me. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things that were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and lo- and the life was the light of men. Hear me today. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So he is the creator of life. Then he gets placed in the creation that he created. Think about this. And he gave himself for the creation. Most people okay, wouldn't give their life for anybody. I'm just, look, I would. I would give it for someone that hated me, honestly. I really would. Because I know where I'm going. And I know I would love to get that martyr rope. <laughs> There's a martyr rope I really want. I'm ready to get my head chopped off for it. Whatever I got to get. I want my eternal martyr rope, you know. Um, but here's the thing. I would die for anyone. Not many people would. Most people would be so self-centered in their own lives that they would get in a fight over someone cutting them off in a drive through I've watched it happen. Get killed over this stuff. Think about that. Think about that. I got into it with a guy, Kidoba. Okay, this was like a week ago. Okay, and if Jesus hadn't paid what He paid for me and born on this amazing day, I would have never done this. We were both we both pulled up hand in hand with one another. 
Okay, pulled up, pulled up. I didn't know if he was going. I started to get frustrated. There was some behind me. I was trying to back in. He was sitting on the other side. So I just yanked around him. All right, yanked around him. He, he yanked around me. He was looking at me. I was looking at him like, what are you doing? And he's looking at me like he wants to take my head off. Okay, I hop out the car. I'm on the phone with my sister. He's out the car. He's out the truck ready to fight me. He's yelling at me. I don't know, a bunch of cuss words. And I said, I said, hey, man. Luckily, usually back in the day, I would have been hot. I would have been ready to fight. And this dude, you could just tell this dude, if he hits you, it's going to hurt, right? But back in the day, I would have I definitely put up for sure. And uh, I hop out the car, and he starts yelling at me. And I go, man. I go, brother, it's just a misunderstanding. I said, I just didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know what I was doing. It's no big deal. He's like, oh, man, I thought you were flipping me off. I said, no, brother, I wasn't. And my sister's like, tell him Jesus loves him. <laughs> I said, hey, Jesus loves you. And you could just tell it hit him. It hit him hard. It hit him hard. So I go into Kidoba. I'm telling everybody, Jesus loves you. This, you know, that's where I am. That's how I do it everywhere I go. I always tell everyone Jesus loves them. Because you just don't know what people are going through. And especially, like, show love to people behind the counters. Everyone's so rude. Show love to these people, okay? They're just, if, even if they don't do things right, show love to them, okay? I mean, you were there. Everyone's been there. So... I'm in Kedoba. The Lord tells me, pay for his son. His son comes in, pays for his son's burrito. I said, all right, Lord, no problem. I pay for his son's burrito. His son's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, dude, the Lord wants me to pay for it. I'm paying for it. He's like, shakes my hand. He said, thanks. We walk outside. He walks out. I walk outside. As soon as I walk out, I can kind of see the dude there, but this girl starts talking to me about she's selling this stuff for like suicide stuff. And she's trying to sell this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I try to help out anyone I can and uh, so I figured you know I'll give her some money and help out it's for people preventing suicide I'm for that I struggled with it for years I'm all for helping that so uh I'm sitting there well I see the dude I can see the dude out of the corner of my eyes so after I'm done with her I go hey what's up man what can I do for you he and he comes over and he's like man let me pay for that burrito I'm like brother I said listen the Lord wanted me to show you love you're gonna you're gonna just accept it because I'm not taking no money from you He's like, well, man, he's like, I just feel really bad. He's like, thank you, shook my hand. And he starts telling me about what's going on in his life. You know, I'm worried about my throat because of this dip. And, and all this, I got to pray for this guy. I got to love on him. The Lord told me this as I left. <laughs> Try not to cry. The Lord told me, he said, that was the first real encounter he had with me, with Jesus, you know. How many times do we miss stuff? Especially during this time of the year, Christmas. Everyone's fighting each other in the store to get gifts, stuff. Everyone's trying to do whatever they can to buy their kids 50 toys. Never teaching their kids what it means to give on a day that was represented as God giving. The day of Christ being born was a representation of God giving us. To us was given a Savior. Hear me today. When you're out Christmas shopping, which it's about over with now, when you're out, even after this, to the new year, whatever, show the love of Christ. Someone cuts you off and start yelling, say, hey, hey, it's not like that. I love you. You're amazing. Jesus loves you. You don't know what people are going through. Don't miss the opportunity to help someone, love someone, be there for someone. Don't. I promise you it's worth it. And I'm not telling you the story to go, look at what I did. I don't tell anybody half the story. If you guys, listen, I do so much stuff all the time. I'm not saying glory to me. I'm just saying I do so much stuff to represent the Lord. I can even t I can tell someone every day. People get upset with me if I were to do that. They'd be like, well, <laughs> like, like I'm living some high life. Like I'm not. I'm just living a Christian life, a Christian life, a representation of Christ in me. So here we go. John. 1 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and behold beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the father the only begotten begotten is set apart so everyone's like well he was you know you hear about the sons of god and all this listen there was only one begot begotten means set apart it means there's no other like him he's the only one ever there's nothing or nothing there's nothing comparing to what he is and what he did and how everything he's the only begotten so right here, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was God. Now we read in Isaiah, as we go back to Isaiah, what? That Isaiah called him God, right? All throughout Scripture, it calls Jesus God, because Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. They're one, even though they're separate, okay? 
So right here, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Now let's go to John one twenty nine. The next day, as John saw Jesus, now here we go, this is scripture being fulfilled as well. This is John the Baptist, this is the first time John the Baptist sees Jesus. He he just knows there's one coming to you, that when you baptize him, the, the, the uh, Holy Spirit is going to come down as a dove and rest upon him. That's the one, that's the chosen one. That's all John really knew and was told if you look at scripture. He didn't know much more than that. So what did he say? The Holy Spirit came upon John. The next day, as John saw Jesus coming towards him, he said, Behold! Do you think John did this on his own? No, he did it by the power of the Holy Spirit that was upon him. He said, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It doesn't say the, the Lamb of God that, that coats the sin. It says takes away the sin. It, it divides the line. No more sin. You have the availability for what Jesus came and paid for you to be set free from sin, not to be hindered. If you're hindered, more than likely, and you do everything you could do, and no matter what you sin, it's probably spiritual. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But more than likely, if you're battling something, a sin, and you can't, you've tried everything to get over it, and you can't get over it, it's spiritual. It's not physical. You've opened up a door, and there's a demon in there attacking you, oppressing you. Okay, that's a whole nother sermon for another time, but you have to realize this. Jesus paid for you to be set free from all. Just because you got saved doesn't mean a... Oh, a poof, I'm perfect now. Everyone thinks that. Like, Then why is there so many Christians that struggle? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. He said he, be, he became a curse that we might be set free from the curse. We have to do the part that's been gifted to us. We have to produce what he's already put in us. We have to produce it out. You know, I can give everyone the ingredients to make food, but they got to actually make the food. they got to put the ingredients together. We are the ones that put the ingredients together. We have the ingredients right here, right here, Right here, all through him, praise the Lord. But we have to put it all together. Listen, this is powerful. <laughs> okay, let's finish out here. It's going to be a shorter one. I know everyone, you know, having a good time with the other family, or at least hope you are. Uh, John three sixteen. everybody knows it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever lasting life let's read verse 17 for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might might be saved why does it always say might because the decision depends on us do you know that god sends no one to hell we send ourselves we send ourselves by not choosing him and following after him the bible says you must deny yourself pick up your cross and follow after him that's the key it's that simple but we complicate it we make it tough we make it hard it don't have to be hard it does not have to be hard i promise you so hear me today. Jesus came to be born, fully God, coming down to be at the mercy of his creation, to pay our price, for us to be set free, for us to become what he created us to be. He paid for us to become as we were at the beginning. He didn't die and rose from the dead just for sin. He did it so we could become what we were created to be in the beginning, with full dominion over the earth, full ruling, with being able to be a joint heir to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to be blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. There's no greater blessing than stepping into Jesus. He has more for you. Listen, there's no other, there's no other God in the world. Okay, well, first off, there's no other God, period. But there's no other false God out there that claims to give, bless you for you just doing what you're told. The Bible says, hey, if you do this, you'll be blessed. Hey, if you do that, the Lord wants to bless you. The Lord says, hey, if you do what you're already commanded to do, I want to bless you on top of it. After I've given my life, after I've paid your price, after I've done everything I can do, there is no justification and no excuse. God sends no one to hell. We send ourselves there. We have every availability in the world to turn to him before we die. He gives every opportunity. He gives every choice. The creator of all came down and became what? He became what? Man. Went through our struggles as man. And then died and rose from the dead to be exalted above the heavens. Think about that. A name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. On earth and in heaven. So I'm going to end that with that today. Remember this season. It's Christmas. It's not Christmas. Not about Santa. Did you know that if you change two letters around in Santa, it spells Satan? Don't you think that's odd? We all worship a man who's got a big beard and he knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you've been naughty or nice. Tell your kids the truth. Listen, there's some preachers out there that I love that say it's okay. It's okay to celebrate Christmas and Santa. I don't believe that. My kids will never, never celebrate it. I will tell them the truth. There's no such thing as Santa. 
We get your gifts. We celebrate as, as Jesus, okay? Don't ruin it for the other kids or ruin it for the other kids. I really don't care. <laughs> you know, David, have some compassion towards the kid. Listen, why would you want to tell your kid a lie starting out? Think about it. We've all been lied to. What is God? God hates liars. Think about that. God hates liars. He doesn't say he hates sexual sin. He says he hates liars. Hates them. Wow. That hits deep, don't it? Told you the ending was going to be great. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. Lord God, I thank you for everyone that's watched this video and tuned in. Let them, let them share this with someone today, Father. Let them share this with someone they love. Let this encourage someone. Let them be filled with encouragement today. Let them be filled with love today. Let them know that they are loved. They are loved by you. That you came down and became man, a human, because that's how much you love them. I mean, that's, whoo! I mean, and then paid the price on a cross and went through the, all the issues of life and, and walked perfectly in doing it. I mean, Father, you walked out 613 laws and 10 commandments. Wow. Wow, you did it for us. You did it for us. You, 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 you gave it all. For us. Thank you. Thank you. Protect my brother, my sister, whoever's watching this today. Let them be safe wherever they're traveling to. But more than anything, let them feel your love this Christmas. And let them remember all, remind all those around them that this isn't about Santa. This ain't about Christmas. This is about Christmas. That we use it as a representation of your birthday when you were born and given to the world. We thank you for what you paid for us. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. God bless.